Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. Just testing if you can hear me all right, if you can see everything. All right, where's the chat? Okay, here we go. Um, hey, everyone. Comics Legend. Hey, Comics Legend, good to have you here. You're a very hard working artist. It seems like you never stop working. Uh yeah. <laughs> that's um that's one of those things that when you're kind of like your work is also is also your passion and your hobby. It's kind of like hard to um yeah <laughs> draw a line. Alrighty. Cool. Excellent. Alright, so I think Everything is working, so we can just jump right into it. Um, just before we start with uh, today's session, I think uh, we're just gonna finish up this guy. There's not much else I'm planning to do with this guy. We're gonna keep it simple. Um, you know, it's pretty stylized anyway. Um, I thought about you know changing the position of the wings just because they're kind of like coming out of his neck. So but we might try something different. But again, it's not gonna be too different anyway. Um, so the rest would be just doing the uh, the bow and the arrows, and hopefully show you a, a process, a simple process of uh, posing this character, um, just to to make it more appealing, obviously, than what it is. Uh, and also the kind of like a devil's tail as well. Um, so yeah, a couple of things that I I hope will be of interest for you guys. Uh, so yeah, uh, but again, just before we start. Um, just want to show you something in case you've seen it and or you missed it. By the way, I just hang on. Oh no, here it is. <laughs> Sorry. Um, let me check the chat. I'm having a hard time learning zeros. Do you happen to know a place I can get personal classes with the assignments and such? Uh, so I. I, I do have a course that is specifically for Seabrush, um, and it's, it's it had uh, so far like amazing results, and the, the students so far um, are loving it, <laughs> based on what I the feedback that I that I get, and it's a, an end to end course, so it just covers absolutely everything that you need to know about Seabrush uh, in a very systematic step by step way, uh, step by step um, approach. So there's no assignments per se there's no uh, things that you have to complete you go at your own pace but it's um, yeah it, it's something that I spend years developing so that it's it's a process that if you follow it step by step it will I can guarantee some results because I know it works um, I'll share with you the website but then I just want to show you something else about the Seabrush um, workshop Hang on. So if you go to the 3D concept artist, so this is the the website that I that I host with all the all my in depth courses and and things like that. So I have the Zeros Guides website, which is more like resources, tutorials, guides, things like that. And the 3D concept artist is kind of like the academy where I have like in depth courses and workshops and that sort of thing. So if you go here and scroll down to the bottom where it says the Ultimate Zeros Guide course, you can at the moment is closed. Um, and I also just closed the extra mile. I'm gonna get to that in a second, but the Ultimate Series Guide course is is essentially that it's just a course that takes you from from zero, like knowing nothing about Zeroish. I start with the absolute basics, and we create a character like this, right? So all you have to do is just click on the join the waiting list, and that should bring you down to the bottom. Put your email, uh, name and email, and as soon as I open it up again, uh, you will get a notification saying this is ready for enrollment, and you can go through. You know, I'm not gonna show you here, but you can go through everything um, just so you can see what's part of this. Uh, but that's that's pretty much it. Hopefully, that's helpful. Anyway, the other thing that I wanted to to show you, if you go to the 3D Concept Artist website, before I had a banner here um, to join the Zeroish work the Zeroish robot workshop, uh, but I had to take that down uh, because I was in the middle of an enrollment week for the other course, the Extra Mile. <laughs> so, and when I do that, uh, it's like crazy time for me. I have to be, you know, on top of the ball. <laughs> um, but I just want to show you some of the awesome stuff that 
everyone is doing with the workshop. So it's a workshop that is only three days. Uh, it's using ZBrush 100%, and for the rendering and and the concepting, well, the the concepting part is done in ZBrush, but the rendering and the compositing is done with uh, any software that you want. So I use Keyshot just for convenience, but um, I show you how to do it quickly in, in ZBrush as well. Um, but you can do any renderer and then Photoshop. So the the results are fantastic. I mean, you know, I thought I thought it was gonna be more like um, follow the design that I did, but it's more, you know, providing the workflow. So everyone is doing their own. Um, their own character, which is fantastic. And and basically, I provide some resources. You can follow along. It's only three days. And in fact, if you if you condense everything, it's actually, well, three three or four hours. I did mine in three hours, the same time that I spent um, doing the, the actual workshop. So it's a technique that produces really, really awesome results. Um, very presentable, very polished image. Once you know the steps, but um, but the workshop itself is three days. So once you finish the workshop, is you can do that like in you know half a day you have a, a new concept. So anyway, my point is um, that this is not available right now. Um, and I know the Pixology guys sent a uh, a newsletter pointing to that thing. So I apologize for that. It's not uh, it's not available right now because what I said um, I've been in a, an enrollment week. But this week I'm gonna open it up again um, and just make it available for everyone, and you can just jump back into it. Um, and that's that's it. That's what I wanted to share uh, share with you guys. But it's it's really cool to see everything that ev well all the robots. Um, and also I thought it's something else that kind of it's like an, like a process that we can use for the March uh, of robots. So for the next month would be something pretty cool. Um, anyway, I will leave it there, and we can just jump right into this uh, Comics Legend probably have been teasing your creature skin pack weeks from now <laughs> don't expect the release of those brushes absolutely so I have everything pretty much ready um, I was just packing everything and setting it everything up so that you know creating the the quick start guide and the video tutorial so that you guys have an understanding of how they work so uh, Comics Legend is referring to a set of brushes for creature or skin creature and, and texture that I'm about to, to release hopefully this week so again if you're part of the email list uh, I will send you an email with everything that you need to know um, but it should be ready pretty soon again I sort of like took a, a break uh, again when I'm when I'm doing an, op an opening of the course or an, an enrollment I'm like a hundred percent focused on that so I cannot uh, I sort of like stop doing anything else but um, I closed the extra mile uh, yesterday night my time and now we can just go back to the usual so um, yeah we'll we'll I will let you know um, as soon as they're ready but hopefully this week we'll be ready uh, so yeah hey hello Francisco all right so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the with the tail of this guy, um, just to kind of like finish the, the the body or like the actual um, character itself, and then we go into the assets. And maybe while I do that, uh, I can re reply to some of the questions. Um, how long have I, have I been modeling, or is that a scary question? Um, not not a scary at all. I mean, I've been modeling for. Um, I mean. It depends, because I've been playing with clay since I was a kid, right? So, but that doesn't count as modeling. <laughs> but I, I suppose that it sort of gave me some kind of a, an understanding of the material or develop, I don't know, call it motor skills or whatever. So it's it's been since I was a kid, right? But uh, professionally, like actually modeling stuff, like with a real clay or plastic or anything like that, for about 10 years or more. Um, so yeah, quite a bit of time. So what I just did there, I just appended a cylinder, and I'm gonna use this one to create the tail of the character. Um, again, I think this might be a little bit too too intense, as in too many too many polygons. Um, you can do that from the initialize tab, but since I already appended that, we can just go to the gizmo and click on the cog icon here, and you can just change to a poly cylinder or cylinder 3D. Uh, the difference between these two is just how they end up, like the caps. 
So the cylinder 3D is basically this. Everything converges into a single point. So you have these triangles. Um, whereas with this one, so that's the one that I have is similar to this 3D. Uh, cylinder 3D. If you go to poly cylinder, what you end up with is these quads like this. So in some cases, it gives you a, a better smoothing. Um, yeah, a, a, something a bit smoother. So I'm going to do this just to, to set that up. Um, so with these cones, I can determine how many points I need. So I'm going to set this pretty low. Because it's going to be a thin, yeah, something like that. And instead, what I'll do is I'm going to add a bunch of polygons like this. So 30, let's go for 35, right? So the reason I did that is because ultimately this is going to be a long tail, right? So I can establish the amount of kind of like bend, oh, not bends, but yeah, loops so that I can bend it later. And then I just go ahead and stretch it like this, right? And, and now the, the whole point is just to try to find a balance between the dist oh, well, a, a good balance between the distance of the points, right? So it's not going to be perfect squares. I'm just going to stretch it a bit more. But, you know, it's pretty decent. So that's this simple cylinder is going to be the, the tail, right? So let's go ahead and uh, do a couple of things. First, I'm going to go ahead and give it a bit of tapering. So again, with the Gizmo 3D, click on taper, and I can just push this. It's going to solo mode as well. I can hold the shift key and that will give me integer numbers here. Um, and with this white cone here, you guys see that one? So the white cone uh, allows you to change that curvature. So I've explained this one before, but it's always good to revisit it. Right. So we use these two um, when we created the, the arms as well of this character. So you can go back to that previous video. All right. Pretty straightforward. Nothing complicated here, right? Um, let me check the chat so I can <laughs> chat about stuff when I work on this thing. Um, I did your course in Linda. It helped me so much. Oh, great. Awesome. Yeah, so for those who don't know, um, I have a couple of courses in Linda. Um, well, three courses actually. One about ZBrush Core to get you started with ZBrush Core. Uh, another one with ZBrush kind of like prototyping, and another one called the Kid Bashing Technique. So those are like you know random stuff that I've done uh, for LinkedIn Learning or well, Linda.com is now LinkedIn Learning, um, and they're pretty cool. Um, I don't know if this is the place to ask how do you achieve a smooth surface look in ZBrush. Um, so the way that you achieve smoothness in ZBrush is basically with subdivision. Um, you have dynamic subdivision. So right now, this tail is going to be pretty blocky just because we don't have enough points, right? We have uh, 290 points. That's, that's virtually nothing, right? Um, I have this dynamic here, which basically gives you a dynamic look or like a preview of how much um, or, or how smooth will the, the geometry will look once you subdivide it. And I have this preview smooth um, subdivided, so I can go for three, four. So this number here, it's the equivalent of how many times you subdivide this actual mesh. So again, this is just a preview, but now it looks pretty smooth. If I turn this off, it's going to be blocky. So it is the same thing as just using the divide button here. The difference being that the dynamic subdivision provides a dynamic preview, so it's not actual geometry. And then you can just convert it to geometry later, or you can just use the, the divide button to, to subdivide it. That's how you achieve the smooth surfaces, if that's the question. If your question is like, you already have a bunch of points and the surface looks a little bit bumpy and that sort of thing, uh, it's, it's a different approach. It's more about controlling the, the surfaces and, and polishing them rather than the, you know, the technical aspect of how to achieve smooth, smoothness. Um, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and use the C modeler here to extrude a couple of faces. Oops. So I'm going to hold the Alt key to tag this. 
and I'm going to right click, make sure I have QMesh selected, uh, polygroup all. I mean, the the target here doesn't really matter because the target is to how like which way you're going to apply this action. So you select an action, uh, in this case QMesh. The target is you know whether it's a phase or sorry whether it's a poly loop or multiple phases and th that sort of thing. Um, I just like for the most part to use polygroup all, but since I manually tag these polygons with the all key and clicking, there's no need or it doesn't really affect it. So this is my target. I manually set the target. So I'm going to click and drag, maybe like that. And I'm going to hold the all key without letting go of the click. And that just cycles through different colors of the polygroup. And what I'll do is I'm going to mask this area, invert the mask, bring in the gizmo, center it. Oops, go back here. And I'm going to scale this and bring it back. Right, so this is going to be the, actually, let's just push it forward, otherwise it will be a little bit weird before I finish. So this is kind of like the, you know, the, uh, like a cone at the end for the tail. Um, yeah. <clears throat> let's go ahead and clear that mask and repeat the process. Click and drag. Right, and then mask that area. Invert that mask, bring in the gizmo, center to the unmask areas, and scale it. Not too much. Right? So hopefully you see what I mean. So now I'm gonna go ahead and mask just this edge here. Let's clear everything. Mask this edge, invert, center the, the pivot. So all of, I'm I've been doing this for a for a while, so it for me it's kinda of like second nature, but let me just do it so in case you haven't you know, follow along with this before. So all I'm doing here is holding control and that access my masking tools. I can click and drag and that, you know, the term is what I want to mask. So I'm masking these edges. It doesn't look like I did anything because it's just a single loop of edges or um, points. And I'm going to hold control and click once in the canvas and that inverts the mask and I can bring in the gizmo. Let's say if the gizmo is over here or whatever. If I press this uh, location icon, that's going to center that pivot to any vertices that I don't have uh, with mask. So it just goes right in the middle of this. So now I can just go ahead and do this. Right? And we're going to need some loops as well, because if I smooth this, this is how it's going gonna, gonna to look. So I want to have something a bit more um, sharp or something sharper here. So I'm going to right click on an edge. I'm going to go to insert, already have it, and I'm going to add maybe a couple, maybe one there, closer to this edge, and another, oops, and another one around here, and one right in the middle, just to even things out. And I'll do the same thing closer to this edge, oops, like so, and another one around there. And if I want to sharpen this this edge here, I can use the uh, crease tool or I can just bevel it a little bit. So let's see. I think that looks pretty decent, actually. Yeah, so all I want to do now is bring in my move brush with the Accu curve, and I want to push this point forward. Like that, and maybe using symmetry, I'm gonna hold the, the shift key and just move these points a little bit. That's pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, looks so, all right. Um, I might do something else, so I'm gonna mm, think, yeah, I'm gonna show you something else. So, if I hold control and shift. To select just this polygroup, invert it, select this one as well, <clears throat> and invert it. So I selected this, I'm gonna give it a single polygroup, uh, which you can do that with Control W. That's gonna assign a polygroup to anything that's visible. Um, and then I'm gonna mask it, bring everything back, invert the masking, and I'm gonna bring in a soft deformer. 
Um, I think this one is too long for what I wanted to do. Nah. So what I wanted to do is just add a bunch of loops here and then just deform that bit, but I think it's not gonna, I mean, it's too long <laughs> to do that. So instead, let's just bring in the gizmo and let's mask just this part, invert that, then scale that slightly. Mm. I don't know if this is gonna work. All right, let's keep it simple. Uh, I was just trying to show you like, you know, more different techniques, but uh, to be honest, the simplest way to do, uh, all I wanna do is scale these loops. You can just go to the C modular, right click on an edge or an edge loop, go to scale, and then you can select what you want to scale. So if I select edge loop complete, right, it's going to allow me to scale that entire loop. So I can just click and drag. Do this. Like that. So I just want to create a, a bit more of a curvature here. Perfect. Right, so here's the, the devil cell. Um, you can sharpen this one as well this area here with an extra loop. So let's get out of dynamic, right click, insert, click and drag. So that when we subdivide it, it's gonna be sharper there. Easy. Okay, let's get out of solo mode. And now what I like to do is I'm gonna set up the pivot of this tail. So I'm gonna hold the Alt key with the gizmo selected or visible, and I'm just gonna place it roughly, roughly here. You can do it manually, or if you wanna be more precise about where you put the, the gizmo, you can just select some faces or with the um, C modular. But for me, it's just fine just to do it like that. I don't need to be precise because this is gonna be embedded in the, in the body anyway. So let's push that there and let's scale it down. All right, so I think, I think this is fine. Maybe higher. All right, cool. Now, once I, you know, once you start like creating additional parts or assets or um, whatever else, you need to keep in, in mind that um, if you design this in 3D, if you're not following something that is already a 2D uh, um, asset or 2D concept, sorry, um, you need to try to keep everything within the same visual language uh, or like sort of like following the same um, yeah visual cues that you have already assigned to the to the character, for example. So in this case, the the tail fits feels a little bit too thin uh, compared to this chubby guy. Uh, so a simple way to to fix that or to bring it closer to the 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 you know the visual language that I'm talking about um, is to just inflate the whole thing so I can bring in my um, custom palette here and go to inflate and just make it a little bit chubby not too much just a little bit more um, and the reason it's going to be straight like this is because when I pose the character, we're working on a T-pose, very boring pose, but symmetrical, is that it's going to be a lot easier to, to pose this um, if it is, is currently, if it's straight. And if you were to rig this character for animation, that's usually how, how you want to have that, right? So let's keep it like this. Let's keep it simple. Um, what I'll do also is, I think in terms of topology, yeah, it's, it's, it's perfectly fine compared to the rest. Uh, so I just wanna select my standard brush and <clears throat> convert it into a paintbrush. So I can just assign some color. So I'm gonna select a reddish tone, fill object, and just gonna grab same colors around here. And maybe a darker one for the for the end. That is it. That's pretty much it. Now, it doesn't look like much. It looks boring, weird, but um, once we pose the character, it's, it's gonna make more sense. And I'm gonna keep it as a separate sub tool as well. That's gonna uh, that's gonna help a lot when I get to to pose the character as well. Okay. So the next thing, let's go ahead and 
switch to this gray mode. Um, it's a, an easier way to evaluate the, the the mesh or the the sculptural details or the the volumes. Because uh, sometimes if you, I, I like to use polypaint as part of the process, and I, I I sort of call it like the the work the work in progress polypaint or the yeah like a temporary polypaint if anything. Uh, and it's good to to have that as an idea, but uh, sometimes the more colors that you add and the the, the more complex the palette it is, uh, sometimes it could just distract you from the actual volumes, which is I think is you know they're very important. But uh, so I like to switch them uh, on and off. Uh, another thing you can do <coughs> for that um, for that thing, <coughs> I think I'm gonna go for some water because <laughs> I'm being talking too much. Um, give me one second, I'll be back. All right, I think my, my, my voice is back. Um, can't, can't remember what I was saying, but let's see, let's see the chat. Cool, um, yeah, the skin brushes, nice. Glad you like them. Hey Alex, good to have you here. We got um we got a session tomorrow. So keep your eye um keep your eyes in the in the community. We have a session with the extra mile. Uh okay, so there's no there's so many ways to create one thing. For example, the tail could be made in tubes, C sphere, etc. Um what is the deciding factor when choosing a particular method? The the method that you use is just whatever it's easy, I think, whatever it's easier for you. Uh sometimes I'm uh if I use a method it's you know and you and you see me doing something it's like oh, i can do that in like faster and easier with this other method that's fair enough it's just you know what i'm used to um and i what it works for for me i know there's some other ways to do certain things like for instance the tail could be easily done with a c sphere but i would like to have a straight line uh which sometimes with the c sphere is not as easy to to maintain that's the reason I chose to do this one because I know I want a, a clean surface, simple, um, easy to manipulate. Uh, at the moment, it's just straight. If I were to create something like some tubes around it or something that requires a bit more of, of an organic flow, then in that case, probably the the sphere would be my approach. So it's depend on depending on what you what the outcome would be, if that makes sense. But uh, but also it's greatly influenced by the but what's easier for you? So uh, I know some some artists like myself included. Sometimes um, I prefer to use the transpose line. Um, if you're new to zeros, you might not even um, remember or know the, the the transpose line for posing because it has some extra tools and extra things that make it a little bit easier and and more interesting. But you know the gizmo is super easy as well. So it really depends on what you're used to and um, sometimes you can upgrade or, or improve your workflow by changing and trying different things. And uh, But yeah, it's, it's kind of like a difficult question to answer because there's no, there's no right or wrong. It's whatever works really. Um, cool, awesome, all right. Alrighty. 
we'll come back to the chat. Um, so I, I just remember what I was talking about before I went for my water. <laughs> um, so you can just hold the shift key here with the brush pen thingy, this icon, to toggle the poly paint off. Um, I also have in my custom UI this fade opacity. That's the same thing. And this fade opacity that basically changes the opacity of the poly paint, which is super cool. Uh, that can be found, uh, I think it's on the render palette. Yeah, render palette, fade opacity. It's the same thing. Um, oh, another cool thing that I should mention is make sure that you are part of the email list because I'm going to share my UI finally. So I spent some time um, cleaning it up. So removing all the, you know, the macros that really don't make sense or they're useless. Um, so for example, just to give you an idea, this one right here, this clear button is, is, a, is a button that I made myself. Um, and what it does is if I do, I don't know, like a, like a snapshot like this, right? And I want to clear it, the shortcut would be control N, right? But sometimes I don't want to, you know, I don't have my, I don't know, my keyboard or it's, it's just not something that I would use all the time. So I just go ahead and use clear and that's it. So it's a custom macro. It's super simple. It's just a button with a, with a shortcut to that, um, to that, to that shortcut <laughs> basically and you can assign a hotkey to that as well and change it if you if you wanted to but uh, for me it's just easier same thing with this big brush it just sets the settings of the brush to be huge or these ones right here um, i can click that and automatically gives me the the c modeler and enables the, the polyframe so i can you know work with c modeler and the brush becomes really small or i can just go to the move brush and it sets back turn off this uh polyframe and gives me the, the brush that I had before. So um, those are the type of things that I know I know what they are because I build them and they're super simple and they work for me. But if I share this UI with you guys, um, and I know I've been re some, some of you have been requested it, if I share it, it's like sometimes you do it, it's like, I don't understand what this is doing or why is this even here? So that's what I'm saying that a UI is very, very personal. However, what I've done is just that I, would, I had simplified this, uh, got rid of all those useless things that you might not um, use anyway because they're just shortcuts to something else. Um, and I have created a UI that I'm going to share with you guys that is, is virtually the same thing as what I have here, including my, uh, my custom floating palettes here. So the brush stuff and my tools, all of these will be included as well. Um, and I created two. So this is my right. I'm right handed. That's the reason I have all my tools here on the right hand side, but I created one for left handed people as well. So I will be sending that as well in the email list. Anyway, back to what we were talking before, um, which was let's go ahead and do the, <laughs> the, the assets. So I'm going to do um, I'm going to do the, the bow first, I think. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to append a cylinder as well. Let's do the same thing as before. Going to solo mode. And for the bow, all right, I think I'm going to establish the, the height first. But I'm gonna do it with the guy visible, just because I want to have. And I'm gonna enable transparency so I can see through it. Um, I just want to make it like again, kind of like chubby, but almost like the same size of this guy. So it will create a nice sort of balance. I hope. Okay, so this is kind of like establishing the proportion and that's it. Go into solo mode again. Um, and this one is going to be pretty pretty straightforward as well. We're going to use the deformers. I think that's the easiest one right now. So I'm going to click on the, the gear icon. Uh, I'm going to go to taper. So I'm going to do that first. And taper, let's say, oh, actually, before I do that, I forgot. <laughs> what I wanted to do was the same process as before. So I'm going to do a cylinder so I have less... Um, less polygons. So let's repeat that very quickly. Okay. 
All right. So yeah, basically, I just I just did that with a with a simpler um, tube or a simpler mesh. Okay, let's go into solo mode and let's go ahead and do the same thing. So now we're gonna use the taper deformer, and I'm gonna click on the top one and I'm gonna scale it down to about 0.5 or uh, 0 0.7. 0 0.7. Same thing with this one. Push it up about 0.7. So I'm holding the, the shift key so that I can snap to those numbers and uh, we get that sort of nice uh, taper which is kind of like what we want. Great. Now let's go ahead and add some details here. So kind of like the handle of it. Um, I'm not into bow and arrow so I don't know the terminology <laughs> but yeah basically the area where you will hold it. So I'm going to go ahead and mask an area like so. In fact, if you want to, you know, in this case, it's pretty simple, but if you want to make sure that you're masking kind of like the centered area, you can just enable symmetry, but instead of using the the X symmetry, which is usually just left to right, uh, you can use the Z, uh, the Y symmetry. So now, so you see, it's not, um, it's giving me this point here and this one at the top. All we have to do is enable local symmetry. So now the point is not in the center of the world, but in the center of the actual object. So locally, the center. So now we can see this a little bit better. So this one is the, the one in the middle, I think. Yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. And that should be fine. Cool. And I'm going to assign a polygroup. That's it. We can turn off symmetry back to normal. So this one is going to be kind of like the handle of the of the bow and I'm going to bring in my C modeler right click on a on a face Q mesh selected this time I'm going to use polygroup all and polygroup all just means that anything that has the same polygroup is going to work just fine and I'm going to click and extrude this inwards so this is kind of like how the guy is going to hold this bow all right so I just want to create some some difference. Uh, it's going to be a little bit thicker than this, but just want at the moment I just want to create some thickness. Perfect. In fact, now let's just leave it like like this for now. Um, let's go ahead and right click on an edge, go to scale, and we're going to use the same technique as before, just scaling the whole thing. But we can do that with the symmetry again, so we do that at the same time. just to manually sort of taper this. There we go. Um, we could do the same thing here for, for this area, but um, I don't know, maybe let's try it. Yeah, I think it's fine. Maybe we pushed it too much. Yeah, perfect. I think it's fine. Um, all right, so we have the <laughs> the base of that bow. Uh, we, obviously, we have to generate that curvature now for the, the actual bow. Uh, before we do that, I'm going to see if I can... Um, I don't know if we need it, but just to generate some... an area here where you can sort of like put the, the string. Um, no, not that anybody's going to see it, but just to give you an idea of how to go about it. Um, I can just go ahead and hold the Alt key to um, isolate this or to tag this rather than isolate it. So tag these two polygons and then we can do um, an insert. Probably is going to be a good idea. Mm, yeah, an insert would be fine. So I'm going to right click, go to uh, insert and I'm going to click and drag. Oops. Make sure that the target is set to, uh, it doesn't matter, again, because we tag the polygons, but the modifiers we want to inset region, so the entire region, um, center, so everything seems to be fine. There we go. So something like this, and I'm going to tag these other two, and just click once to do the same thing, right? So Sivers will remember the, the latest action that you did. 
And the whole point of doing this is that I can just maybe right click, uh, make sure that I have Q mesh. Hang on, right click on a face. Yes, Q mesh, Q mesh, uh, polygroup all. And now I can click and drag to extrude this if I wanted to, but I don't want to extrude. I want to just push this along the normal. So while I'm dragging without letting go of my click, I can hold shift and it does this, this thing. And so we have that sort of gap. That's what I did basically, just create that gap. So if we enable dynamic, we're gonna end up with this sort of like, you know, gap where you can, um, that can hold the, the string. That's that's all I wanted to do really. Um, let's just go ahead and do, um, no, nah, I think it's fine. Like I said, nobody's gonna see this, that part, but sometimes it's good to do it. Um, all right, let's see. How to create wings easily in ZBrush? Um, there's many ways to do it depending on the wings, I suppose. So is it like a dragon wing with membrane and visible sort of like joints or is it uh, feathery wings or like a metal wing? So this, de depending on what you want, like I said, the, the outcome is where um, allows you to choose the approach and there's many ways to do it. Um, I'll show you a simple way with the with the with the uh, wings of this guy, but there's different different things. Uh, I didn't understand the email list reference. Um, ah, yeah, sorry, thanks. Um, yeah, when I mean when I mean what I mean about my email list or newsletter is. If you sus subscribe to the newsletter, either through the 3D Concept Artists or Seabridge Guides, the same thing. They both kind of like my, my stuff. So if you subscribe to that, um, that's how I can communicate with you and, and share like tips. And I, I share a bunch of tips and tricks uh, throughout the weeks. And that's how I also I let you know about opening of the courses, you know, like the, the, the brushes that Comics Legend mentioned as well that are coming up this week, that sort of thing. So that all comes with um, through the, the newsletter. So you can just go to, um, actually, I'm just gonna show you because it's gonna be easier. So if you go to the 3D Concept Artist website, um, you can just click on subscribe. Like I said, you can do that here or in ZBrush Guides, the same thing. Just put your email, uh, name and email, tick that box and you're good to go, you're in. That's it. Um, I've got uh, finally got some time to do the third day of the Cirrus Robot course, uh, the workshop, yeah. Um, but I'm in less than a new in Photoshop. Can you recommend a free tutorial uh, courses to get me set up, uh, get up to speed? So with Photoshop, um, I don't know. As uh, but, uh, there's so many things you can just go uh, Google or or YouTube something uh, for Photoshop beginners. There's so many things that I can I can think of anything on the top of my head. Um, you don't necessarily have to do it in Photoshop. Like I said, you could do it with Affinity Photo, for example. That's plenty, uh, pretty much the same thing. Um, if you want a free option, uh, what's the name? GIMP um, allows you to do the same thing, like basically to a, to a different degree, but you could do the same thing. So I cannot recommend something specifically because I cannot remember, <laughs> but um, I'm pretty sure if you just follow some tutorials and on YouTube on how to use layers and just the, the basics of where the layers store, um, how to create masks, that sort of thing. Then you can follow the, the third day, which is just more about the workflow and using the tools to, to create that final look. All right, so we've come to the, the next stage. I'm gonna use dynamic just to see how this is looking. And I think that's looking pretty good. What I'll do is I'm gonna right click on the edge here, go to bevel and I'm going to manually bevel this. So by doing that, we just generate that sort of nice um, softness of that edge, but at the same time, because we have two edges, it's also gonna be sharper. So there we go. Um, and also let's right click, click on insert, and let's drag one right at the bottom, maybe two, just to sharpen that a bit. And that's about it really. Cool. So in order to give this bow um, like its shape, 
uh, what I'll need to do is create the string first, and then we will, yeah, we will be able to to know a little bit better how to uh, in which in which way to bend it. So let me try to explain this a little bit better. Um, I'm gonna go ahead just for fun, and I'm gonna use this one of these IMM brushes, right? And this IMM brush, the clothing um, clothing hard W by CG Cutter, it's, it's fantastic. It's just a bunch of things that you can use for clothing. Um, the, the only reason I want to use this is because it has this knot, uh, it's pretty low res, and this is how I want to put the, <laughs> the, the string at the top. So uh, all I want to do is maybe turn off symmetry. I'm going to click and drag anywhere, it doesn't matter, like that. You'll see it's like a nice knot. And then I'm going to go ahead and split the masking point. So in my custom palette, I have this split on mask points. And now we have this floating note or floating knot. And you can just go back to the to the move brush. Um, so now I can bring in the gizmo and I'm going to set it up to oops, rotate it this way. And I'm going to go ahead and, and make sure that this side is perfectly flat. So I'm going to control that or hold control to mask that, invert that, bring in the gizmo, center to the unmask areas, make sure I'm in the right position. Maybe we need more than that. All right. So let's do that again. So masking that point, invert, and I'm going to flatten this just by using the the scale in the z-axis. So it's going to flatten that. Perfect. Cool. So that's that's all we need really. Now let's go ahead and turn on the floor, and I want to put this this guy um, sort of pointing towards the the x-axis, so this red one, because that's going to make it a lot easier to, to generate kind of like the, um, the mirror and weld. So let's rotate this, hold, oops, hold in shift. So we want 90 degrees, right? Something like that. And did I do 90 degrees? Hang on. Let me repeat this because I think I didn't do the flattening it properly. Invert that. Reset the rotation. Uh, by the way, resetting re the rotation without actually moving the object is just the same as unlocking this with the Alt key. So I just press, like, this was like that, right? So I can just hold the Alt key and reset that so that now it is straight. Oops, <laughs> invert the mask. All right. Oh, clear the mask. So now it should be easier to just go ahead and do this 90 degrees. Perfect. And that's it. We can just move this, let's say, around here. Not too much. And bring in the, the C modeler. Tag these two faces. Make sure Q mesh is selected. Click and drag. And I'm going to go past the, the center point. Right? Like there. And I'm also going to make sure that this is not um, creased. So I'm going to right click, go to the creasing option here in the C modeler and I'm going to use the edge loop complete and I'm going to hold the alt key so that's how you remove um, hard edges or creased edges so now it's not creased um, but we have a nice dynamic knot which is pretty cool for the string of the of that bow all right now obviously we need two sides so the string has two ends um, and that's the reason I sort of move this this area past the middle line because now I can just go ahead and click on mirror and weld. Whoops, turn off the local symmetry. So now we're telling ZBrush we don't want to work with local symmetry or, or the point or the volume uh, of this mesh. We want to work with the center of the actual scene or the world. Um, so now we can mirror and weld. And now we have that line right in the middle. That's the reason I went past that because if I don't do that, If I leave it like that and I do mirror and well, we're just gonna get that gap. But I wanna have a continuous, yeah, mesh. So let's just do that. And again, hold the Alt key. We have the crease tool just to uncrease that area. 
and that is it. Now we can go ahead and mask this. Actually, let's wait for the autosave. Um, let's center this pivot and let's rotate it 180, uh, sorry, 90 degrees. And I'm going to center. I think that's fine. Cool. And I'm going to scale this like so. And let's see. Let's get out of the solo mode. And I'm going to tog toggle or turn everything off except the, the bow. So I'm going to hold the shift key to toggle everything off uh, with this icon. And then I'm going to enable just these two so I can work on this. Uh, all right, so I'm going to scale this down. It's going to be around there. OK, so this this string is the, the one that is going to determine the the actual length of the or the height of that bar of the of that bow. Um, but what I like to do is I'm going to right click on this. Uh, go to delete edge loop complete. I'm going to delete this one in the middle. Right. So it's going to be easy to manipulate um, this this end of the of the rope of, of this string. So I'm going to mask everything or half. Sorry, invert the mask. And now let me just move the, oops, holding the Alt key to move this like that. I'm going to go ahead and push this down like so. So this is going to be the kind of like the length of it. Um, and I think that's, yeah, that I think that's all right. Cool. All right. Clear the mask. Now, I'm not going to make a loop scene here because once I pose the character, it's going to be a lot easier to just have one single you know, loop that I can control things with. So to give you a, a quick example, if I right click, I'm going to do insert and I'm going to click and drag to create that. So that's just a single point that I can mask, right? Invert that, bring in the gizmo and do this. So the guy can go like, and, and and use it right. So for the for the posing stage, is a lot easier. Um, so I'm gonna undo that. Cool. So now that I have this, let's center it, and I'm gonna click on the this house icon thing to place it right in the middle. And I potentially can do the same thing with the with the bow. Reset rotation. Center it. All right. So now they're both kind of like in the in the center of the wall, and I can push this like so. There we go. Now there's another thing that um, that I was thinking that we can to manipulate is we can just manipulate one side and then we can mirror and weld uh, pretty much the same thing that we did with the with the string. Now to do this um, the easy way. Oh, let's just keep it simple. So, yeah, we're gonna do it like this. So I'm gonna bring in the gizmo on the on the actual bow thing. Click on the gear icon, and I'm gonna use the awesome bend curve, right? So this one is the one that allows you to do points and move things around. Uh, right now it's pointing in the y axis. Uh, no, sorry, it's pointing in the z axis. So the this cone that is here on its own. Oh no, that's the smooth one. Sorry. This one, sorry, the, the red one. Um, this cone is indicating in what axis you're creating those points. So right now it's creating the points on the on the x axis, but you can just change it to be the y axis. That's the one that we need. So up and down, or the z axis if you wanted to. But we need this this y axis. So now we have two points, right? Um, which allows you to do this sort of thing. Right? But we need obviously more points. So I'm gonna do a few more. I think I think this amount of polygons is fair enough. Um, and you can forget about the bottom area. We're going to concentrate on the top because that's what we can sort of mirror and well. So I'm going to go ahead and push this first one here. So this is the one that's going to hold the string in a way. something like that. And obviously 
we want to give it a, a bit more of a nice curvature. So I'm going to try to find something like this. Alrighty. So, you know, pretty simple. We can, you know, you could do like more crazy stuff if you wanted to, but I think this is, this is fine. We're going to keep it within the, within the style of the character anyway. But you see how easy this is once we establish some, um, yeah, something. <laughs> um, I just think that maybe, just maybe this might be a little bit too, too extreme. Um, just because of the the length of the arms of the character, so um, let's just take the the string thing, and I'm just gonna push it closer, and I think that's gonna work a little bit better. So let's put that one here. All right, I think that works. Cool. So let's let's go ahead and mirror and weld. Um, so obviously, if I do mirror and weld right now, even if I do it with local symmetry, it's gonna mirror and weld uh, based on the x-axis, which we don't want that. So we we want the y-axis. So here in the mirror and weld, um, you can enable that tiny letter here. Um, oops. Yeah, in this case we we have the the floor um is not in the middle, so this is what I was saying was saying that it's probably easier. We just you know keep it simple and, and actually move this. So I can bring in the gizmo, uh, turn on these pizza icons, and then rotate it 90 degrees. So now this is on the x-axis, uh, both of them. That's why I enable that, and I can mirror and weld. So now we have this, and we can just delete that if we wanted to, right? Um, delete, let's loop, there we go. And we can do the same thing with the with the string, because it didn't work, um, so I wanted to, for some reason. Mirror and weld, oh, no local, mirror and weld. Hang on. Oh, I think it's the... So let's do that again. The the bow is the one that is not working because I did the mirror and well uh, based on the local axis. Sorry, on the um, on the world and not the the local axis. So let's do that now. Mirror and well. Why is it not doing it? Mirror and well. Oh, so the opposite. I did it on the local symmetry. It shouldn't be on the local symmetry. Now it's working. Cool. So now let's um. Let's see how this looks. Let's turn off the floor. Let's rotate everything together. Alrighty. And if I go ahead and enable dynamic, we have a nice, a nice bow. So um, one thing I'm gonna do quickly is just assign um, actually, the polygroups are fine. I'm just going to merge these two together or combine them. So let's merge down. And I can enable dynamic. There we go. For both. Now, one thing I'm, maybe I should do is just add a couple more um, loops in here. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so symmetry, Y, C modular, right click, insert. So I'm going to click and drag one, oops, just to get something closer here to this edge. Maybe another one. Um, and I think it works. I just need to fix the, the position of this. So I'm going to create a single polygroup for the entire rope so that I can easily mask it. 
invert that mask and push it. Hang on, I'm gonna hold the Alt key, position that better. All right. Enable dynamic. There we go. That's what I said. Nobody is gonna see this, but it's kind of like cool to to know how to do it anyway. All right. So we have the bow. Um, we need some arrows, and then we can sort of like pose the the character really quickly. Let me see the chat and see if you have any questions about it about this process. Uh, with the clip curve also flatten the the clip curve also flatten this and straighten the clip curve um yeah the clip will clip against that sort of shaded area of the of the curve um so for flattening is yeah it's quite good uh, i'm not sure about what you mean by straining it will be straight based on that angle whatever angle you use but yeah um uh, is there not what single one single mesh it is Uh, most bows are in a nest shape. Thanks. <laughs> cool. Um, sign up newsletter. I said it would get an email. It didn't get an email from the the five day challenge. You should have. Um, just make sure that you know you have that as soon as you sign up. Because I don't, I don't, I don't keep people in my email list that don't want to be there. So. What I do is, if you sign up, you should get an email to confirm that you actually want to be there. So it's like a co double confirmation, just to make sure that you want to be in the list. So as soon as you sign up, you should have got an email, maybe went to the spam, if it's the first time that you receive it or something, that it just, it has a simple link confirming it. Just click that link and you're good to go. Then you'll start getting the emails. Unless you don't, um, if you don't get that confirmation email, then you won't get anything. Because uh, I need you to confirm if you want to be part of the list. So. I don't know if that is what happened. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and bring back everything. So we have the, the bow. Uh, so what I'll do with this bow is place it as if I'm going to Pose it already, uh, but I'm not gonna pose it like this, or I'm not gonna use this pose to pose it. Uh, I'm gonna pose based on the right hand side of the character, the right arm. So holding shift, rotate. Might need to be a little bit bigger actually. I think it should be this way. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, something like that. Um, you you'll see what I mean when I get to post. It's just gonna be easier. Uh, it, it would be the same thing actually. You know what? Just keep it simple. It, it will be exactly the same thing. I was just trying to save time, but it's not much much time that I'm actually saving anyway. All right. So for the um. For the arrows, what I'll do is, uh, I'm gonna keep it again super simple. Let's go ahead and um, let's see what would be a cool way to, just to show you something. Let's just append anything, doesn't matter what it is. Go to the solo, and I'm gonna go to Q cube. That's gonna make this very simple. And I'm gonna assign a single poly group, just holding Control and W, enable symmetry in the X, X axis, there we go. Bring in the, um, the gizmo again, and I'm just gonna do the, the arrow shape. Um, again, plenty of different ways to do it. Just gonna keep it simple. So I'm gonna mask, hang on. I'm having some issues with my pen. 
There we go. Mask that, and I'm gonna scale this like so. That's gonna be the point, pointy bit, and then this one right here, invert, push it like so. Maybe push these whole points, all these two, just like that, and maybe take these ones and scale them up a bit. So, you know, pretty straightforward, and then you can just move this like that, and maybe actually make it very pointy, or not really. I mean, I just want to keep in line with the design. So if I go dynamic, that's what we're going to get. Obviously, more like this. And we can give it a bit of a tapering manually, like so. Just to make it more interesting. I'm not trying to recreate a perfect arrow bow and arrow. It's just, you know, a stylized, interesting, cool character. All right, so obviously we need some extra loops here just to sharpen some some areas. Uh, but I feel this one, uh, I, I, no, I don't know, the, the shape of it, I kind of like it anyway, like this. There we go. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to maybe split this to um, just thinking what would be the best way. So we add a couple of, this is just quick testing just to see if I'm going to get the effect that I want. So something like that might be good. Mm, yeah, let's just do it manually. So I'm going to put a couple of edge loops there, maybe more like that. There we go. And maybe we can bevel this as well. That's it. I think that works. I mean, obviously it's not like, you know, this actually could be flatter. Like that. Um, but yeah, I think that works. And we can just give it a bit more of a pointy end. All right. Scale that and push it forward. All right, once you subdivide it, it's just going to look very pointy anyway. Um, cool. So that's the that's the point of the arrow anyway. Uh, for the rest, it's just going to be super simple. Let's append a cylinder. Uh, again, it doesn't matter. We're going to turn it into a polycylinder just to keep it in line with the rest. Just simple. And that's it. Let's just scale it in the z-axis. Uh, I'm going to move it away. And I'm going to merge it together. So so now this um, cylinder is merged with this uh, top of the arrow or tip of the arrow. Um, but we have different polygroups, so it doesn't matter. So I'm going to mask this, invert it bring in to the center, scale it down. And here we can just determine the, the length of that arrow. There we go. I think like a chubby fat arrow would also work. Um, before I do that, actually, let's add some edge loops. Oops. Insert one here. And one on this side as well. And in fact, we can nah, just let's leave it like this. And let's push it closer. Easy. All right. And for the feathery 
type of thing for this um, for this arrow, uh, I'm going to actually show you a quick way to do it with fiber mesh. Uh, so for that, let's go ahead and append a plain 3D. Yeah, maybe it's a good idea to do a, a quick save actually. Um, but anyway, this plain 3D, I'm um, going to make double enable so I can see it for, from both sides. Hold shift. All right. So um, I just have a plane. Let's go ahead and isolate, let's say, these much polygons, maybe less. Mm, I think that's fine. Um, and let's delete hidden. So I'm going to delete hidden. And I have this simple plane. I can go ahead and scale it down. Even more. Cool. Now, this is the, like, here's the trick, right? Uh, this is a single-sided mesh, just a plane, uh, but I have double enable. So double for you guys should be under the display properties. Uh, this one right here. Um, this is quite important when you're working with fiber mesh because fiber mesh will generate the fibers based on the normals. So if you have double enable, um, usually you shouldn't have an enable, in fact. So if you're doing like hair on like the scalp of a, of a character, if you just mask some areas on the head and then um, just create fiber mesh, if double is enabled, you will have fibers going inwards and outwards. So it doubles up the amount of fibers and you won't even see the ones inside. Um, so that's because the way that Zero works with fiber mesh, it generates those fibers based on the normals of the polygons. So if you enable double right now, even though this is just a single sided polygons, you have no normals going um, up and down in this case and you will generate those uh, fibers. So like I said, in most cases, you would have this set to um, off, this double switch to off when you're working with fibers. But in this case, actually, it's useful because we want to have those feathery things in both sides. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to Fiber Mesh. And I'm going to click on Preview. So you see that we have fibers going up and down um, from this mesh. Actually, I'm going to scale this a bit more. And I'm going to play with the modifiers. So I'm going to first reduce the amount of fibers quite a bit. And I'm actually going to remove the polypane. I don't want any polypane on this. And I'm going to increase the coverage so you can see what we're dealing with. And again, these ones are kind of, it's going to be more stylized. So they're going to be thick anyway. So coverage of 500 is fine. Um, I'm going to remove the twist for now. Maybe I'll add some twist later. And the gravity, I'm going to set it to zero. So there's not going to be no gravity, right? So this sort of like wobbly thing that you can see at the moment, uh, which I is kind of cool anyway, is due to these um, gravity direction variations. So 0 0.05 will give you that. If you set it to zero, you have like straight lines. So it's up to you what you want to achieve. So I think having a little bit of this um, kind of like turbulence in the gravity, it's, it's kind of cool. Um, obviously, we're going to play with the length. something like that. And what I can do is just um, reduce the variation in the length. So you see some of them are longer than others and that's the, you know, due to this thing. So if I set it to zero, they're going to be pretty straight and you can just, you know, add a bit of variation, not too much. That's it, right? Um, all right, so I think let's go to solo mode. Oops, not solo mode. Uh, preview. I actually want to reduce the amount of fiber. So I'm going to keep holding control and shift to mask this. I'm going to delete hidden and turn this on just so that we have less in you know, like a thinner set of um, of these fibers. And in fact, just hang on, just want to have something a bit smaller. Let's delete that one as well. All right. And we can increase the length a bit more. Cool. Now I want these to be uh, these pieces to be actually thicker, but I, I sort of have reached this coverage to five thousand, so I cannot move this any further, and this is still pretty thin. So that is due to the width profile, which is this curve here. So I can enable 
um, I can reduce this actually to something like that and go to the to let's let's put a better number so thousand right I can go to this with profile and this determines the profile anything on the left hand side is the root or the base anything on the right hand side in zeros most most of these things um, that deal with curves and things like that is root or base against steep or um, end um, so what I'll do is I'm going to push this to the top and that one as well to the top so both the tip and the and the bow and the bottom of this feathery thing uh, is going to have like full thickness and now I can just use the coverage to increase this even more All right now we can reduce the amount of fibers keep going to lower amount because ultimately we what we want is something thicker like thicker geometry again just to go with the stylization uh, so for that I'm going to go ahead and enable this profile I'm going to add maybe three yeah, three is fine. Three or four. Maybe three. Yeah, three should be fine. So uh, this profile, what it determines is um, how much you know resolution that um, each fiber is gonna have. So if you if you have it at one, it's basically a plane. Two is still a plane because you still have two faces. Three is kind of like a triangle shape. You see it here at the top. If you add four, then it's going to be a square. Five is going to be starting to get more points, so you, you get a different shape. So three is totally fine for what I want. There we go. Uh, segments is the amount of uh, segments, you know, from let's say top to bottom or base to tip. Um, so three segments is plenty for this. Uh, maybe one more actually. So four, ah, uh, nah, forget it. Let's do it three, just keep it simple. Um, and that's it. We can just go ahead and, and produce this. Now, before I go ahead and, and actually start grooming this very quickly, one thing we can do is play with the gravity. So right now I have it at zero. That's one of the first things that I did. If I just go ahead and do that, it's gonna start pushing everything, whatever we have towards the bottom, right? That's how gravity works. Um, but in zero, you can determine the the gravity, the direction of the gravity based on the camera. So we can rotate things around, right? Put it this way up. And if I do that, now everything is going to follow the same thing. So that's how I can just achieve this very quickly, uh, the kind of like the direction of those fibers. And, you know, if you want, if you like the, the curvature, you can leave it like that. I'm actually going to increase the length now that I can see that I need more. Right, and, in, and even more segments actually, just to have more resolution. There we go. So, like I said, if you like this sort of curvature, sort of like flowy like this, the this is a good way to do it. But you also have the gravity profile. So this curve is essentially what you see here represented uh, with this curve. So you can just go for something straight, or more straight, or you can just push it forward or remove it altogether. So if you reset this to something like this. There's virtually no no curvature from the from the beginning. Oops. I'm gonna have to reset it. My my course is going crazy. Reset it. All right, so you have something more like that, and then you can reduce the gravity. So I kind of like that. Right? Let's say I'm happy with this. Let's click accept. That will generate a new mesh, which is the fiber mesh. I can take the plane and just move it out of the way, put it in my original folder. There we go. Um, so we have just fibers now, right? Which is pretty cool. So now what I'll do is um, I'm gonna bring in one of my brushes. The fiber mesh brushes. Um, these ones are also in the series guides, by the way, if you want to get this pack. This is kind of like a, my, my grooming brushes to, to have control over the, yeah, over, over how I um, manipulate this, these fibers, right? So they're specifically for fiber mesh in ZBrush. Um, where is the one that I want to use? Uh, here. So this bender is pretty cool. 
I'm just gonna go to my grooming palette here. Oh, I have to fix this. I'm gonna set the collision to five and now watch this. Hang on, where's the floor? All right, so I'm gonna have to rotate things around like that first, then like that. Just so that we can work with symmetry. Oh, hang on, sorry. There we go. That's that's it. That's all I all I really wanted to do was that. Um, but just using these these brushes, it just uh, again just some custom brushes that I that I use all the time to do fiber mesh, and it just simplifies the screwing process quite a bit. You can do the same thing with the move brush, by the way. What I'm doing is just this one is a lot easier. It has certain settings that um, that you know respect certain things in the in the fiber mesh. I'm not gonna get too too much into it, but uh, it just simplifies this process quite a bit. Um, you can also use I have another one. Uh, which is this uh, sharp lengthen and this one is is gonna sharpen the fibers but it's gonna be pretty sharp so it's not gonna sharp um, scale or, or lengthen everything it's just whenever I click it's kind of like more localized if you will and let's go back to this guy Uh, but yeah, so that's that's how you groom this, uh, and that's it. Let's go ahead and move back to the move brush. Uh, let's get out of solo mode. I'm gonna hold Shift to hide everything except the bow and the arrow. Oof, I think I made them too small, but anyway. So 90 degrees. Yeah, I think they will be too small, but anyway, I think it works. That's it. So here is our arrow. Maybe it's too big, actually. Okay, so let's go ahead and combine this. As soon as you combine these, uh, these will stop being a f um, fiber mesh and it will become just a normal mesh. So if you go back with the fiber brush or the fiber mesh um, brushes kit, you won't be able to groom it the same way. It will just behave like normal mesh. So um, what I can do actually is some, just in case, duplicate that piece and chuck it in here as a you know reference. And I'm gonna go ahead and merge these together. And you'll see now this is a normal mesh or a single mesh and everything, you know, it has dynamics and everything. So it's pretty cool. Let's turn off dynamic just so we can multiply this more to or uh, create this multiple times um, that's it let's bring back everything and let's let's just place a few let's take this one actually and put it next to the uh, um, to the bow and arrow just to see whether or not this actually works um, I'm gonna turn off the body. Yeah, I think that's fine. Cool. So that was just to determine the, the size. And now I can uh, duplicate this whole arrow. And I'm going to push it, put it in the, what's the name of this thingy? The quiver thing. How we do with time? Oh, we have like half an hour. Mm, we're not gonna have much time, so 
Let's see. I'm going to hold control just to duplicate this. And just to create a couple more. All right. All right, cool. So um, the last thing I want to do before posing is to fix the, the wings because that was just a quick thing that we did last uh, last time. So I'm going to select that, go into solo. Let's just duplicate those, chuck them into the originals just in case. Um, so what I want to do with this, you'll see it's just a, you know, badly manipulated piece. Uh, so what I can do is just isolate, let's isolate this polygroup and let's delete hidden, right? And that's just to create a single sided mesh. Right? And now that I have kind of like the shape, I can go ahead and remesh all of this. So we have a, a nicer topology. Let's clean this up a bit as well. And I think that's about it. Let's do one more time. Yeah, much better. Um, cool. So I'm um, not sure if I like that polygon there, but let's try it one more time with the same amount of polygons. There we go. Uh, all right. So we have some, some nice polygroups. This is, you know, we've went through this process in the previous stream. Uh, most of the stuff that we did was like with this technique anyway. Uh, so now I can go ahead and use my geometry. I can go to dynamic solution, dynamic to make it smoother, but also I can add some thickness. That's how we determine the thickness. And obviously let's turn the smoothness. So it's smoother. Yeah, and I think that's that's working fine. Alrighty, so yeah, I think that works. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm gonna turn off the smoothness subdivision, right? So that gives me that sort of thick mesh, uh, but this is just a preview, right? So if I turn off dynamic, it's just a preview of that um, thickness uh, and I'm gonna apply that. So now I this is an actual mesh, right? That I can subdivide. Oh, cool. uh, I just wanna double check, yep, that the normals are correct. And that's it, now I can enable dynamic but this time turn off the thickness and we can get the smoothness. So now it's just a single mesh. Again, I, I covered that in the previous the previous stream. Some tweaks. Alrighty, so I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick save. Um, I would save at this stage this version of the character so that the next one is the pose. So let's just let me do that uh, very quickly. Uh, let's call this Cupid. All right. So this is the kind of like the final version. Um, oops, let me forgot to add some color to this thing as well. So fill object. There we go. And maybe the bow and arrow. I mean, we can paint them later. I mean, it's not uh, half an hour. Actually, let's just do a quick paint uh, on this. Let's isolate the, the string, which is gonna be more of a white color. Mm. 
we have some weird polygroups. Let's see. There we go. All right, and I think this one should be more of a darker color, perhaps. And we can extend that to the to the top and bottom as well. Oops. Make sure I have local symmetry. There we go. And what else? Let's do the, the arrows. Same deal, darker color. Um, this would probably just be a gray color, kind of metallic thingy. And these ones, uh, I don't know, let's go for something red as well. Bright red. Reddish. Yeah, I think that works. Uh, same thing with this one. It's not going to be the same as the other ones, but it doesn't matter. All right. That's it. <laughs> we completed the polypane. All right. So let's just do a quick save. So this should be the one that I saved before. So it's like ready to go. Um, and then we can just do a quick pause in the last um, 20 minutes that we have. Just let me check the chat. And I, hopefully I can answer some of the questions that you guys have. So. Uh, is that really like you UI? Is there a way to get it? Yes. So that's exactly what I uh, said before. Uh, maybe you weren't here. That you can join the the email list. Um, I have set it up, simplified it so that I can share with you guys. Uh, so yeah, you can. If you're part of the email list, you'll get it uh, pretty soon. Um. So. Vla Vlado Jewel is asking how to resolve the problem with the zoom control alt that appears a tool. Uh, the zoom control alt, I don't use control alt for zooming. I just use control. So if you use control and right click, that's the zooming. Control alt, uh, I don't, I mean, you can use control alt, but it's only using control. There's no need to use alt if that's. Maybe that's the issue. I don't know. You only need to have control and right click, and then that's it. Uh, what's your big screen, big scene brush button for, Pablo? Um, that's just to change the uh, the size of my brush. So sometimes when I, for example, if I work with a scale, a larger scale like um, Character Creator does. So when you bring it to ZBrush, the the scale is too big, and the brushes in ZBrush won't really work. Um, with that scale, so this big scene, big scene brush, just set the brushes to work with a bigger scene, like a larger scale scene, so that they work in the same way as you know this this um this scene. Um, have you go back to sculpting in VR? Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't sculpted in VR. Uh, I know that there is a new update for uh, Gravity Sketch, which is the one that I really like uh, for sketching, but I I took my VR down. Um, because you yeah, didn't have so much space, but um, yeah, I'm planning to to get back to it pretty soon. Just haven't had the time really. Uh, do you know how to solve the zoom problem? Control Pen Appear tool in the Don Zoom. Nah, sorry, I'm not sure what you mean. When you use the control and pen, but I'm not using control, so I don't know. I don't know what what you're talking about. Sorry. Um, uh, 
the fiber mesh doesn't seem to fit the simplified language of the evil character of the pieces. Ah, oh, yeah, fair enough. I mean, it's just for the distance. It's going to have the same. Uh, again, what I do here as well is as much as designing and creating concepts as much as giving you different techniques and tools. So sometimes I choose things that don't really go, but um, I don't mind them in this case. Like I said, from the distance, it's just going to look like a blob of color really so um, but fair enough you could I mean you can do something different um, but that's it okay so thanks Danny I think if that's what Vlado meant about the, the right click issue so this one if that's the yeah, so that you can you can use um what what Danny suggested about the the pop up. So in the in the UI, you just disable the the right click pop up if that's the the issue. But sorry, I just didn't get what the question was. Um, did you make the fletching feathers in fiber mesh? Yes, I just did the fiber mesh and you know groomed them a little bit. Uh, cool. All right. So no more questions. In your training, can I learn some techniques to bold max? I'm interested in goddams exactly. Oh, sorry, Oscar. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't. Very rarely. I teach things that are so specific for one thing um, because to me that doesn't that doesn't really teach much other than just follow like I can t tell you all the steps that you need to do uh, I don't know like a like a make a head or like a like a gun or, or something like that and I can tell you click here and do this click here and do this but that is just following my personal workflow and that's just you know the end result might be really good but it doesn't really teach anything so most of the, the things that you will find online from uh, my end at least and the type of things that I provide as a you know training content and all of that is focusing primarily on workflows and how to use the tools to make it work for you so uh, for instance in the extra mile so the extra mile course is the one that I have online um, I created this creature it's like a sci-fi you know space travel a creature type of thing and that's the one that I use as a reference and a demo throughout the course but not a single student has replicated that character because what I what I focus on is on the on the workflows and the um, you know how to make the tools work for you and understanding what the steps or the workflow are so that everyone in the course they do their own characters their own creation they follow other concepts or they do their own concepts uh, by just following the program so it is for me, I I could do it. For me, it doesn't have as much value, so I wouldn't spend my time creating content that is just about following something specific. If that makes sense. Um, I don't know if yeah, I don't know if that sort of answers the question. So in short, I don't have that type of content, and I don't think that if you're looking for something that is specific, it's going to help you. So yeah, sorry. <laughs> um. But if you're yeah, if you're asking about hard surface modeling in general, the the course, for example, the extra mile is not about hard surface modeling, but I have a an entire module dedicated to that as well. So like, so I do sometimes updates and things like this. Alrighty. So let's pose this character really quick, um, just to give you a, a rough idea of what I what I would do. We have about 15 minutes. Uh, it's not gonna be the best pose, but just something to get us going. So everything is low res, perfect. Uh, so I'm gonna use a plugin that comes with ZBrush, really good. Uh, it's called the Transpose Master. I use this all the time. And all I'm, I'm going to do is click on this T-Pose uh, T-Pose mesh. ZBrush is gonna merge everything together, all the all the, the, uh, the subtools that we had, and it's gonna create this, this mesh. So now, if we go to polyframe, we have a single polyframe or a single polygroup, sorry, 
per each one of the subtools, right? So we can um, isolate things uh, really quickly and it's going to be very easy. So the first thing I want to do is hold control and shift and I'm going to isolate the bow and arrow as well as, well, just the bow and arrow really. And I'm going to mask that. Oops. Invert that masking and I'm going to push this on this side. I'll get back to this in a second. Um, and let's go ahead and just do a simple pose for this character. Uh, it could be anything really. Obviously, he's going to have to be using the bow and arrow. So um, I'm going to go ahead and select this guy. And I'm going to use the masking lasso. So the steps would be similar to, depending on, on what you're posing, but for in general, this is the the idea, right? You have different polygroups so that you can isolate things quickly. You have the masking tool, so I can do this, right? And I can invert that mask. And I have a bunch of um, tools here that I can use, like this masking, so I can blur the mask, grow it, that sort of thing. Um, those are the same things that you'll find in the masking here. But I'm just going to hold control and click once to blur it a little bit a bit more, invert the mask, and here's where things get interesting. So I'll set, actually, before I do that, let's invert that. Let's bring back everything and let's invert it so that we can see the pose and how it's affecting the rest of the model. So I can take this gizmo, holding the old key, and then just reposition that, let's say, where the shoulder of this guy would be, which I think would be kind of like embedded a little bit on the, on the body. So I'm holding the Alt key just to position the pivot. And now we can just basically do this, right? I'm going to rotate a bit, maybe push it forward. Oh, here we go. So one of the things that um, it's important to understand about this process is that things would break. Things are going to break um, a little bit and you'll have to just compensate. It's like doing, uh, if you're familiar with rigging and, and animating and all of that, it's like doing um, the weight painting as you model <laughs> in a way. All right, so I'm going to do a bit more of masking here and I'm going to hold control and click to mask a little bit more just to blur it. And the idea here is just to slightly rotate this and we do the same thing here. Blur it a little bit. Rotate it. So this is the arm that's going to hold the bow. Oh, the, yeah, the arrows. The bow and the arrow. No, the bow. And this one will be the one with the arrow. So this one is going to be tricky. Let's try to make the best. Best one. Best possible scenario here. So I'm going to mask something like this. Invert the mask. Blur it. Oops. Bring back everything. Invert the selection. Let's um, set it to the center pivot. Again, this is kind of like the the new way of doing it. Before, um, I just used to do it with the uh, with the transpose line. the whole thing and I think I, I went a bit overboard with the with the masking that's 
that's better. Now this one is the the one that's gonna break things the most because I'm gonna bend the the arm and I'm gonna do it here from the elbow. I'm going really quick throughout this process just to get something going and show you guys a bit of the process but it should be something that you know it's um that you do it with a bit more care than what I'm doing all right so you see how all this is all this sorted um that's what you know would happen in the in the um, in the posing process, but that's why you can come back with a smooth brush, for example, and soften this, and you'll have to probably re re sculpt some areas. So just with the move brush very quickly and the smooth brush just to, to soften those those lines and we get something a bit more a bit better. Same thing here. So if you're if you're familiar with the process of weight painting and you know assigning polygons to bones might find some relevance to what I'm saying and doing at the moment but yeah it's kind of like that process it's a sculpting while you <laughs> while you do the weight painting so it's a bit weird in that sense but once you get used to it, it's not it's not that bad I think that the the worst part of this process or at least um, especially if you're new to posing and stuff like that in ZBrush is being uh, like accept that things aren't aren't gonna break as in they're not gonna be perfect and just know that you can tweak all of those things very quickly basically what I'm doing at the moment um, but you know just being aware that that's gonna is gonna happen I'm gonna pose this a little bit closer. Uh, another cool thing that you can do here is you can assign you can assign a polygroup here to this just to the hand so that you can isolate it later. And it's not gonna affect the final or like the main um, the main sort of asset that you have. So when you go back to the, to the previous version, it's not going to affect that. So um, I just isolated that. So you can do this very quickly. And you can do the same thing with the fingers and all that when um, if I have a chance but we have 10 minutes so posing the fingers is gonna take a little bit longer so um, all right so that doesn't look very very interesting but we're going to give this guy maybe some slight twist so let's go with the masking tool I'm gonna sort of mask what I want to twist which is kind of like from the neck up all of this um, and then I'm going to use what I used before to isolate let's say this one I don't want to mask this so clear the masking here uh, whoops not clear the mask um, invert the mask and then just hold the alt key 
to clear it. So um, if you hold control and drag just to do what I just did, that's um, to mask anything. But if you hold control and then alt at the same time, you will unmask an area. So I'm just I, I isolating these these pieces using should be using this rectangular selection, right? Uh, maybe this one as well. Invert the selection. Oh, come on. Invert the selection. Then hold control. Oh, come on. Hold control and do all of this, and then hold the Alt key just to make sure that that's not masked. So it's just to select things and masking things like that. Then I can just invert the mask, blur it a little bit, maybe not that much. And then I can bring in the gizmo, center it. I can rotate things. And give this guy a bit more of expression, yeah. more focus on what he's doing. All right. And again, same deal. Like we're gonna have to take this anyway. You can mask everything but this and then just compensate for, for the changes that we did. Right. Uh, let's do. Are we doing the time farming? It's all right. Let's. I, I want to show you the detail and the rest. So, um, let's do the fit. So here from the hips, I'm gonna sort of go for something like that. I think he should be a spend one of these. Oh, come on. Come on. Um, yeah, my drivers are out of date or something. Every single time that I do a Windows update, it just screws something up. Let's do a quick, well, do a quick save, really. All right. I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the hand. Um, you can use the visibility to grow that selection. So you can shrink it. Like so. And, oops, I forgot the hand. Anyway. Just to do something like that, like a like a quick selection of things. All right. So now I can take that mask, invert the masking, bring in the gizmo. Not even sure if that's um, this is the pose that I want to go for, but All right. Um, now. Um, happening. So, don't know what that is. But same deal. What we did with the with the other arm. Just things are slightly intersecting, but. It's not a problem.
just using the move brush here. And yeah, again, just compensate for those changes that we did. Uh, you can also use the move topological brush, by the way. Forgot to mention that. That will respect the the topology, but in this case, everything's pretty smooth. Um, I'm gonna mask this area just to give the the guy some kind of foot or like the indication of. Oops. What did I do? Yeah, just sort of pretending that this guy's sort of floating. Uh, this is really hard to just try to do something with this um, freezing all the time. All right, I'm just gonna put the bow and arrow where they kind of like should be and call it a day because I won't be able to do much. All right, so now you can see the the gap here <laughs> that we need to bring this this sort of arm closer so that you can grab that the guy can grab the the arrow um kind of so or maybe just increase the size of the arrow but yeah maybe I think it will be more interesting to have like a long arrow but you know we can bring this this arm back a bit. And this is the thing, like I'm figuring out the, the pose or something that will show um, the same time as trying to maintain the the proportions, which is kind of like what we do. Oops, that's, that's horrible. Oh, this is really annoying. I think I'm going to leave it here because um, it's just not... It's not working the uh, it's just freezing too much but hopefully you can see what the what the process is just as, a, as an idea the tail I'm gonna keep it on like I'm not gonna touch that uh, just because it will be a lot easier to simply um, leave it as it is and then use the the curve deformer to just give it a, whatever shape we want um, and that's that's really all there is to it I mean like I said, it's just about getting that mind frame that when you pose the character from like a pose, like a T pose in ZBrush, there are things that you need to come back and tweak. So if you change things, even if you like, if you're doing something more realistic, and you, uh, if you were to do this with um like a more anatomically correct character, things will change anyway uh, because you know one one arm will be extended, so the the, probably the triceps will be more visible than the biceps and vice versa with the arm that is sort of holding the arrow or, and creating the tension same thing it's just the, the bicep will be bulging um, whereas the tricep would be less visible so it's just going to be things that you have to tweak based on the pose that you choose right um, and that's why when you're working on a t-pose or an a-pose things look kind of like a bit relaxed um, and then you compensate with 
what, what I just showed you, like smoothing brushes, move brush, you can come back once you go back to the original and do a little bit more sculpting and sculpting and, and that's that's the way, basically. Uh, one of the ways. Okay, cool. All right, cool. This one needs to retopolize to animate. The warfen looks already fair enough. Yeah, this one will be work. Uh, it would work fine for animation. It's not perfect, but it will give you a, a pretty decent, pretty decent animation if you were to animate it. So, yeah. I mean, you you can optimize things, but you know things like the the mouth it has the loops that you need for you know opening and and closing. Same thing with the fingers and the rest of the body. So, um, like if I were to animate this character, I'll probably add more uh, loops to the to the band that he has. Because if he was to sort of bend forward, for example, or sideways, um, there is more topology in the body than in that sort of strap, uh, and that would cause some intersections of the meshes. So you will have to maintain a more even distribution of the polygons, and yeah. But that's that's basically it. it. It could be animated easily. Um, all right. So this is not the the final pose. Obviously, I just don't know what's going on with the tablet drivers. But um, and I reached my time anyway. <laughs> so um, I will leave it here, guys. Um, this is the end of this sort of character. Uh, I might, if I have time, I'm just finishing the pose and and share a a render on social media. So if you follow me on Instagram, you'll you'll see it in there. Um, other than that. Just to recap for those of you who weren't here before, um, I will be re-releasing re the uh, the robot workshop again. So last week was be has been like really hectic for me, and I was just concentrating on the extra mile uh, enrollment period that just finished. So I closed that enrollment yesterday, and now um, I can go back and you know republish that that workshop. So if you haven't done the workshop or if you don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's essentially a 3D, a three-day free workshop um, where I sort of like walk you through how to create this type of robot. So I provide the assets as well, but anyone, you know, you can create your own. I'll show you how to do that. And you see um, people have been just using some of the assets that I provide, but also uh, creating their own designs, which is pretty cool. Uh, and it's a whole process. Just simplify it. You don't have to focus on anything that is uh, super technical. Uh, we do a pretty simple but powerful workflow uh, from the the creation or the design of the robot all the way to polishing the render and, and presenting it. So um, if you're interested and you haven't done it or you want to redo it or whatever, um, I'm going to republish this. So keep an eye on the on the three concept artists website. That's where you're going to find it. Um, oops. Maybe I should put like a comeback to 3D concept from here. Um, it, you will you will see it here. I'm going to replace this uh, soon and you will see it in there and it will be available this week as well. The the brushes that Comics Legend also mentioned, the Skin Brushes Pack, that's coming up um, hopefully this week. I have everything pretty much ready. I finished with the testing. Um, I finished creating some of the uh, the images. Uh, I might show you some of them just, just to give you a, a teaser of what they are. Future skin brushes. Okay, so I think I've shown you these things before, but This type, this type of stuff. So this is almost ready. So this is all done um, with the with the brushes. I just have this is just uh, an image that I did to explain kind of like the building up of multiple brushes. So this is one brush. This is the second brush. This is the third brush. So it's like you use the same brushes of the pack, but you build the complexity by adding things on top of each other. 
um, this is an example of how one of the images that I created looks in zero just with a couple of brushes and then just some poly paint um, and then I just render it in Marmoset just to, to give you an idea but this is the type of detail it's super quick right those those are just the the examples that um, I've been working on so everything is ready it's just a matter of uh, finish the packing app making sure that everything works and has the right naming and all of that and so I'm hoping that for the end of this week um, I, I would be able to to show you that um, I have the the final ones already here in my zeros library so I can give you a quick example of what this is so you can see as well what's going on so in my brushes I have the skin pack so these are all the brushes that you'll get right and and what you can do is is you know building up bit by bit so it's, it's, it's not like a click and drag there's some click and drag brushes but these ones are you know the ones that you can use to build this very quickly and you give the you give direction to to it as well so it's still like sculpting brushes um, so it comes with a tutorial and a, and a guide as well um, you know and then you just combine them to create this sort of complex thing and most of the brushes work really well as like the the effect of the brushes if you invert them they're really cool so for example this one if you hold the alt key you get like this really thick pores as well and again it's about you know giving directionality to everything um, so I'm I'm having a lot of fun building stuff uh, you know just in a few seconds you get something that looks pretty cool I'll just show you another one just as a little teaser I, there are 39 brushes actually that are like sculpting brushes the rest uh, 11 there are 50 brushes in total the rest are like click and drag so for example this one is kind of like an abstract thing but works really well for you know the end of the horns like if you have a horn you just drag and drop this thing in there and it's kind of like a cool cut there also for like creatures eyes you can do this and then bring in the sculpting brushes um, you know, like that and then just work your way around it just to de develop the the eye I don't know it's different things like that most of them are generic and an abstract just to maintain that idea that you know it, you're not you're not gonna find in this pack something like um, a crocodile skin or you know um, lizard skin they're generic so that you can build your own stuff so it's not you're not gonna find something that is oh I want to create a lizard so I need to find the lizard type of brush it's just different brushes I try to keep them as generic as possible so that I can use them in multiple projects not just one time that I want to create a lizard if that makes sense so here's another one this one is pretty cool um, this one works with the height It's a double action brush so basically if I go like this right I create these bumps and if I go back oh no this is not the one this one is pretty cool but that's not the one that I want to show you. Uh, I think it's this one yeah so you can go like this right and then if you go with a lower pressure you can sort of fill in those gaps with a smaller um, smaller point so it has it respects the the height and that just creates a, a cool looking mesh uh, but again they're all generic so the idea is that you do that uh, wrinkles um, this one right here and then just add some wrinkles maybe this is too strong right and then again the, the wrinkles are just to give direction to the whole thing anyway um, they're they're almost ready like I said it's just I'm packing them up so just letting you know that and they're coming and that's it uh, the brushes will be available to the students in the extra mile um, they will be available for everyone really it's just whoever wants to get them <laughs> um, and yeah so I'm gonna leave it here guys and thanks for tuning I will let you know again make sure that you're in the email list and you can register from the 3d concept artists or serious guides to um, be notified when this is when this is ready um, another thing just before I go very quickly I'm planning to launch these um, this one is also coming pretty close I think is to the to the release time is a an experiment that I'm gonna do with uh, patron so I'm not gonna have multiple tiers so that sort of thing I'm not 
uh, too much into that. <laughs> um, if I, yeah, I'm not much into creating different levels of what you can get. So, but it's a nice platform that allows me to, you know, provide content with a single tier in a way. So the experiment is that I'm gonna try to create a an artwork every month um, from scratch and you know the, the the idea creating the design and everything all the way to render um, bit by bit and then if you are part of that experiment um, as a patron I guess it's um, you will get you know if I develop a new brush for that project you will get that brush uh, you get the PDFs and you know kind of like the the exclusive content behind the scenes of things that I don't get to show in 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 this channel, for example, because you know this is just ZBrush, right? But um, I use a bunch of other tools to rec you know create most stuff like texturing, uh, you know, render, and all of that. So if you're interested, in that is also I will let you know in the email. Anyway, going back to um, what we're we doing. Oh, I forgot to say something, right? So let's say that um, if you're happy with this pose, which I'm not, but if you're happy with it, uh, all you have to go and all you have to do is go to the C plugin, click on T pose to sub tool, and clicking that button will create uh, or will take the the pose that you did for this every single sub tool, and it will apply it to um, to the rest of the tools that you're working on. So they they work in mesh. All right, so I'm gonna leave it here, guys. Uh, again, the the brushes can be found not yet. Uh, they will be found in the ZBrush Guides website. Again, I will let you guys know. Is I, I just show you kind of like they, they're almost ready. So hopefully this um, this week uh, will be ready. But they're not available as yet because I haven't finished packing them up. Uh, you know, converting, you know, exporting the the video and you know exporting the PDF with the you know just admin stuff that you have to do at the end uh, just to pack it all up but the, the brushes themselves are ready <laughs> all right <laughs> i'll see you guys next time and have a good rest of your week cheers